Let's take this forward with the Nitin Agarwal, head of BFSI research at Motilal Oswal Financial Services. Nitin, good morning. Good to have you on. So, Abhishek, you know, nicely highlighted a lot of the immediate concern and this fight for deposits that we've been discussing for a while, right? Let's get a little more granular and I want to pick up RBL Bank's example just for, for our viewers. It also, you know, we need to understand how to cut and dissect the numbers because if you look at the headline number, the deposit mobilization year on year seems very strong. It's, you know, 20% up, even quarter on quarter, there's almost a 6.5% growth in deposits. But then you have to see at what cost are these deposits coming because the loan growth, again, quarter on quarter has tapered down to just 1.5%. So how should we read some of these updates that are coming through? Because even if the deposit number is rising, what impact is it have, having on growth? What impact is it having on margins? Yeah, sure. Uh, th thanks, Obi. Thanks for having me. Uh, so starting with RBL, uh, so clearly deposit growth is much, much stronger for the bank. But we also need to see as to how the loan book is positioned. Because the stress that we uh, like uh, are looking at right now is so much more on unsecured than in any other retail segments of corporates. And which is where banks are taking a likely cautious view in growing their books. And specifically for RBL, like almost 30% of the book is in unsecured loan segments. And uh, they have a significant exposure to MFI and credit card. And uh, these are the segments wherein the delinquencies are running relatively elevated. So to that extent, I think that explains why the loan growth is relatively uh, more muted uh, versus how the deposit growth has been. And of course, we'll get to know the segmental color when the bank report numbers. But uh, this is my reading from looking at that dispersion between the loan and deposit growth. You know, uh, that's specific to RBL. But let me ask you a slightly wider question uh, to get, you know, the distilled wisdom. Let's say all the updates we've seen the last two, three days. If I were to ask you, which are the lenders that are managing to win the war on deposits, the fight for deposits, without hurting loan growth and margins too much, which ones do you think uh, perhaps stand out? Any names? See, uh, system business growth is moderating. So you can expect a moderation in business growth for most banks. Though uh, within our coverage, if I look at, amongst the larger banks, uh, ICC Bank is relatively well positioned. Uh, we have seen bank delivering 18-19% loan growth. And uh, we expect now a loan growth to sustain anywhere around 16-16.5% uh, for this year which is still relatively healthier when you compare it to the how the trend has been for other private banks and as well as the system. And uh, alongside, uh, within mid-sized banks, if you look at, Federal Bank is doing a, a pretty good job so far, like uh, one of the better loan growth and the deposit growth we have seen in on the, most of the quarters. And uh, even AU Bank. Last quarter for AU Bank was relatively more muted and as they deployed liquidity, but this quarter they have bounced back. And there has been a pretty good traction on the deposits that we have seen this quarter. But uh, on, on the margins, the second uh, point that you mentioned, I think uh, while at the system level, we are looking at uh, continued moderation NIMS at a more calibrated pace, we are already seeing that the pace of NIM calibration is coming off quarter every quarter. But that trajectory, that directionally, it will continue. And probably as you come close to the turning point, RPI cuts the repo rate, then sometime in FY26, you will at least start seeing NIM expansion or some of the banks which are having a fixed rate point. So to that extent, we think banks like AU Bank, Indusind, and Equitas, they will likely benefit on margin front in FY26. Okay. Uh, you know, so yeah, later this week on Thursday, RBI also meets, right? And uh, we have the RBI decision. Uh, yeah. So no change in, uh, no cha no cut is expected, may but maybe a change in stance. Most of the developed central banks are, are, are sounding more uh, dovish as compared to where they were a month, month and a half out back. So we'll see. Uh, Nitin, uh, we, we also had this phenomenon last week of FII selling, right? And on uh, Friday, we put up this data for Thursday. Thursday was that 15,000 crore net FII sell number. Uh, that uh, bulk of the selling happened in uh, three banks, Reliance and an LNT. Uh, you know, so ICICI, HDFC, Axis, these are all down between 6 and 9% from their recent, recent respective highs. Uh, in your un coverage universe, which ones are a buy? I think, uh, yes, there has been a good selling markets uh, are going through a phase of uh, uncertainty. Uh, geopolitical risks are pretty running pretty high. and uh, But we continue to remain uh, quite constructive on banks, especially the private banks. And in fact, uh, as we speak like uh, today in our strategy note, we have upgraded our stance on private banks. Where we believe that uh, th these banks are well poised to deliver you mid-teens earnings growth and uh, the valuation still re seems very reasonable. While uh, the stocks have corrected as a risk off is playing on, 
but we remain positive on ICICI Bank and HDFC Bank among the large caps. Okay, all right, Nitin. It's always good to hear your thoughts. Thanks a lot for stopping by and filling us in with your insights. But let's